Hi, my name's Scott. Uh, a lot of people have asked me about my pizza oven build uh, and wanted photos and videos and that sort of thing. So I thought I'd put together this video for YouTube uh, to let people know how I made it. It's basically um, a mortarless pizza oven. Uh, there's only a little bit of mortar used on the front. Um, this is where I put it. It's just uh, in my backyard. I found a spot, uh, formed up the um, concrete base and put some reinforcing steel in. It has to be pretty strong, um, the base, to, to hold all the weight of the pizza oven. Uh, that's the picture of the base with the um, concrete in. Uh, I've used these Adbury masonry uh, concrete blocks. They basically just slot on top of each other and then you core fill them um, once the, uh, the blocks are set in position. You don't have to use mortar in between the joints. That's the beauty of them. They're quite easy to put together. You can see the reinforcing uh, bar uh, along the, uh, the blocks there as well. So basically uh, set those blocks up in a U shape and um, put some more reinforcing bar on top for um, a suspended slab which will, will form the, the top of the, uh, basically a table top for the base. Got some formwork going around the blocks to make the top, also some more reinforcing mesh and um, some plywood uh, underneath um, that will be the, the base or the underside of the top. You can see the core fill there on the um, on the blocks um, that was done previously. So that, that's set for a few days before uh, I was ready to uh, pour the top slab. Uh, that's the concrete in the, the top slab. And um, I had to use some, some tie down straps and that sort of thing and some, some props to hold it together and keep it in shape. But uh, you can basically get an idea of the size just by counting the blocks. They were um, 400 by 200 by 200 blocks. And um, you can uh, see it's, um, you, you get an idea from the, the size from looking at those. Next step was laying out the uh, clay bricks. Um, so I've got some dimensions here. You can read off the tape measure. Um, it was 600 by 900. The, uh, centimeter, uh, millimeters the uh, base and about 400 or so high. Uh, it just uses standard clay house bricks so um, if you want to replicate this project yourself you can count off the bricks and get an idea. That's um, basically marking out the size of the arch because I had to uh, cut out a plywood um, support uh, frame to, uh, to rest those bricks on while I was um, putting the, the arch together. Uh, basically the arch uh, is the only bit that I really mortared in. Uh, I used this mortarless design because I wasn't sure if the, the clay bricks were going to uh, be any good basically. Um, they're not proper fire bricks, they're just normal house bricks that I got from a friend of mine. And I didn't want to spend hours um, uh, mortaring in beautiful uh, arches for the bricks just to fall the bits. It's turned out they've, they've been pretty good these bricks and they've worked well. Uh, you can see in these photos um, I've sort of set the bricks out. Um, I used the steel lintel there to um, to make the doorway and I've also used I think that's about three mil thick that steel and um, I've used these three mil thick uh, equal angle bars. I think they're three mil by 25 by 25. So I used two of those um, for each uh, beam effectively that goes across the top to form up the roof. So these bricks are just sitting on top of each other um, and they're just resting on each other so under gravity. There's no mortar used. Uh, it's a view from the inside looking up. And you can see the, the roof of the, um, the oven there. Um, we've got just the steel beams. Um, you don't want to use galvanized steel. It just needs to be um, black black steel. Here's the archway uh, getting set up with some spaces. Um, I did more to that just for looks. Um, so I spent a little bit of time to put that together. But the rest of the oven you can see doesn't have any mortar. Um, so it does have little gaps in between where the bricks go. And you'll be able to see in a, in a minute how I deal with that. So there's the plywood arch uh, 
uh, support for, for doing the bricks. You can see here I've put some uh, steel uh, wire mesh over the oven because uh, that's the next step as well as going to do to insulate it. I guess this insulation is vermiculite mixed with concrete um, uh, cement powder. And you can see a close up there of the vermiculite. You can get it from hydroponics stores. It's just a natural mineral, but it has really good insulating properties. Um, so that's vermiculite, some uh, cement powder and water. And it makes this light, fluffy insulating cement mix, which has two purposes. It seals off the oven to stop the, the hot air escaping. And it also insulates. So it's about 50 mil thick, uh, the layer I'm putting over it. It's a bit thicker on top, it sort of went up to 80 or um, maybe 100 in the center. And what I did, I just uh, coated the, the whole oven in this vermiculite and cement mix. Uh, that chimney is also another Adbury masonry block. It was just the um, one of the, the end blocks um, that was, was just what I had that was convenient to make the chimney. You could use house bricks as well if you wanted to make a chimney out of that. Um, next step, once all the vermiculite was on and uh, had dried, I put some chicken wire mesh over the oven because uh, the next step was to render it. So that was to protect the vermiculite, which sort of isn't very strong. Uh, so I put a, um, a concrete render layer with a bit of color, a bit of brown color to make it look good over the top of the oven. And uh, that made it waterproof and it, um, also um, seals in all the, um, um, basically makes it airtight as well. Uh, here's the finished oven. Uh, I've painted it. Uh, you can see the renders dried uh, and um, it's got a space underneath for storing firewood. There's a shop there with the firewood in it. And that's basically the, um, the process I went through to build it. Uh, next thing, I, I fired it up, put some, some, you need some good quality seasoned hardwood to burn. Uh, it took a while to, it can take a while to start, like to get the heat in and get that burning properly. But once it, it does, it is burning, um, it, it burns really well and it's nice and clean. It's a nice clean smoke. Um, just measuring temperatures on the floor there is about 200 degrees Celsius. Um, that reading was 172. There's 248 closer to the fire. Uh, on the the roof, it, it gets up to four or five hundred degrees, so it uh, definitely gets quite a lot of heat from that fire. There's the wall temperature about halfway up the wall was 310 degrees Celsius. Um, so it does get quite a lot of heat. I found when I was using the oven though that that while there's a lot of heat up top, it tends to lose a lot of heat through the base. So the um, the bricks are directly in contact with the concrete um, top of the table. Um, and it seems to, to suck quite a lot of heat out of the oven. So what I end up doing, you can't see it in these photos or videos, but um, use some calcium silicate board, uh, 20 mil thick, just to put a layer of that underneath those bricks and that's uh, improved the performance of the oven quite a lot. Uh, here's a pizza in, just a, a testing it out. Um, this pizza is directly on the bricks. I found they started getting it dirty, so I ended up using a um, uh, just one of the ceramic sort of pizza stones to um, uh, put the pizzas on just to keep it clean because they're easy to clean. There's the pizza. That's a, I think one of the first ones I did for a test, and you can see it's browned up quite nicely. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope it's given you some ideas for your own pizza oven build.